everybody, this is your host of the Freedom Report, Rob Keynes. It's October 3rd, 2024. We're going to talk precious metals today. There's a lot to talk about as I look at the news. Got a new report from JP Morgan uh, detailing why gold is going up due to something they call the debasement trade in the currency. We're going to talk about into importing a lot of gold and a lot of silver. We're going to talk about the FTC trying to convince people that gold is a scam and getting fact checked on Twitter by the readers. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Um, we're going to talk the gold and silver charts, and I'm going to give you a different way to look at the positioning on the COMEX of the different types of traders uh, than we usually do with the COT report, I think, which is very visual, which I think will help you guys quite a bit. I used to use this quite a bit. It's been maybe a year or two. We're going to go back to that. Without further ado, let's go see why gold and silver are doing what they're doing. And let's get into it. Uh, here on Market Watch, you can see an uh, article, Why the Debasement Trade Lifting Bitcoin and Gold May Continue, says JP Morgan. According to the article by Steve Goldstein, gold has appreciated more than what would have been expected by changes in the inflation-adjusted 10-year yield, analysts say. Some, some fancy math in here we're not going to go over, but we're going to tell you how they got there. Strategists at JP Morgan, led by Nicholas, and I'm not going to get this name correct, Panagertzoglu says gold has gone well beyond moves implied by the dollar and real bond yield shifts. Instead, it has been driven what's, by what's called the debasement trade. What is that, do you ask? Well, they're calling it this because, quote, the debasement trade is a term that reflects a combination of gold demand factors, which in our client conversations range from structurally higher geopolitical uncertainty since 2022 to persistent high uncertainty about the longer term inflation backdrop, to concerns about debt debasement due to persistently high government deficits across major economies, to waning confidence in fiat currencies in certain emerging markets, into a broader diversification away from the dollar, the strategists say. In other words, the financial system's in trouble. And what do people go to? They go to gold. That's all it says. They give you a bunch of reasons. <laughs> but whenever stuff's in trouble financially, economically around the world, they're still buying gold. It's just, it's that easy. Uh, a good chart here that we've showed you before and talked about before off of the World Gold Council's website. This is IMF data, and it's talking about the share of U.S. dollars in foreign currency reserves, meaning how many dollars as a percentage of all currencies do all foreign holders own outside the United States. Well, it's gone down. The dollar used to be dominant. It used to be the world's reserve currency because you can see it almost had 75%. It's about 72, 73% back at the turn of the century. And now we're down to about 55, 56%. So that's about a 20% decline in total currencies held around the world of dollars. Is it still the world reserve currency? Well, it's over 50%. You could say it's the predominant currency. Is it still the world's official currency in trading? Pretty soon it won't be. In fact, according to a World Gold Council study, I think back in mid last year, they said in the next three to four years, uh, we'd be under 50%, somewhere between 40 and 44. So the dollar is no longer really the world reserve currency in a, in Sometime next year or early the year thereafter, it will officially not be just in terms of the math, in terms of how much it's holding. People are dumping dollars. Remember what I said last week in our gold and silver video about how China is now using its dollar reserves and treasuries to finance its own economy. They're dumping, in other words. So the dumping has sped up. Some other data here that we don't care, but we're going to look at this paragraph right here. It says the JP Morgan team also looked at speculative demand from institutional investors by examining U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission data. They find a bullish impulse in gold and Bitcoin futures, but not in Ethereum. To us, this suggests that speculative institutional investors, such as hedge funds, might see gold and Bitcoin as similar assets as beneficiary. The debasement trade may have legs, they say, boosted by rising geopolitical tensions in the U.S. election. Uh, da, 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 da. And there we go. So JP Morgan thinks that gold is bullish because stuff's a little crazy. And if you watch our Tuesday video and I talked about chaos theory and I said all the things going on, uh, the world's extremely complex and things don't move up and down in a straight line. And a lot of things can happen at one time. So there's a lot of negativity going on all, all at once. And the world from economic perspective, geopolitical perspective, so on and so forth, 
And what do people do? They go to gold. That's just another confirming article by JP Morgan. I thought you guys would want to see it. Here is information from the Economic Times on the India time, India time about times, sorry, about India's gold imports. They soar to 10.1 billion. It's triple, and this is in August, triple the previous month. And I'll show you a chart here in a minute when we get to the World Gold Council's website. But in other words, India, India tripled its gold imports in August from the pre previous month. That would be July. Because of why? Because the Union Minister of Commerce and, and Industries said that the duty cut on gold from 15 to 6% has boosted domestic dam demand for gold. Remember then they rose the duty, the duties on gold in India as they were going through their currency switch and they didn't want people necessarily importing a bunch of gold. Okay, fine. Delayed reaction. They reduce that import duty back down, make gold more affordable to citizens. And what are all the citizens do? They go buy a bunch of gold. Why? Well, look at what's going on in the world. Look at what JP Morgan said about all the things in the world that are going wrong. Let's read that again. Longer term inflation, higher geopolitical uncertainty, debt debasement, high government deficits, waning confidence in fiat currencies, and broader diversification away from the dollar. Same thing. So India is now buying a ton of gold. Let's talk about that. Here's a really good update on 19th of September, 2024 from the World Gold Council's website. Domestic gold price tracks an upward trend in international prices. Consumer demand stabilizes gold imports to hit a new high in August. This is for India. Gold experienced strong gains in August with international prices rising 3.7%. Domestically in India, 3.9% going down to another chart premium on domestic gold prices declines why they remove in india they removed the tariffs they removed the import duties so as they did that the difference between what india pays for gold and everybody else pays the gold is a lot closer imports go up oh also in the etfs since the end of july indian gold etfs has seen a surge in investor interest the import duty cut and the changes to the long-term capital gains for gold etfs announced in India's union budget have been factors behind the increase in flows into gold ETFs. So they cut uh, capital gains tax on gold gains and they lower duties, which allow gold, more gold to come into the country at an affordable price. In other words, if they had never made those changes a few years ago, gold would have been flowing into India. Now this is just pent up demand. According to the Association of Mutual Funds, AMFI in India, August saw record gross fund inflows of U.S. turn 38 million, significantly higher than the average monthly gross inflow. And here's a chart. Here's August. It's really, really high. The net inflows have been going have been positive since 2023, but they're really spiking, as you can tell in this chart. And the RBI, the Reserve Bank of India, their central bank's holdings have continued to go as well. They've been buying a bunch since 21, 2021, according to this chart. There you go. All right. On to silver. As my friend Tavi Costa notes, India imports of silver are at record levels. Look at this little highlighted section here. Silver imports at record levels. Now, it could come down a little bit as they import more gold because you got to think about there's a set amount of dollars, a finite amount of dollars. And if they were they were importing much gold, you would think that some of the silver imports would slow down, although they haven't let yet. So India is importing record amounts of precious metals. What do they know that we don't know? All right, here's the funny part about the FTC. Here's a snapshot of the FTC on a Twitter post saying, anyone who tells you will draw money and buy gold bars to protect it is a scammer. Learn more. Did someone tell you to buy gold bars and protect your money? It's a scam. Well, the readers fact checked that and said, well, the US dollar has declined about 50% against gold over the past decade. It's an ad hominem fallacy to label someone a scammer for communicating this fact. <laughs> so a little bit of government propaganda on social media. Oh, and you got to love it. If the dollar depreciates 50% to gold in 10 years, yeah, it's not a scam. So good, good try, FTC. All right. Going on to the gold chart, I've showed this before. We still have broken out in that top, top rack. If you look at a technical chart, gold's on a run, but 50-year breakout. Um, it's slowed just a bit recently. You can see a little bit of a turn down uh, since we reported on the breakout, but it's still going up. And it's going up, not in a straight line, but it's had a really strong run. Now, usually after strong runs like this, you'll get a pullback. So it wouldn't surprise me if there's a little bit of pullback coming, especially when you see the amount of open interest on the derivative markets on COMEX. And I'll explain that here in a minute. When it gets so high one direction or the other, usually there's some sort of pullback or correction. 
So it wouldn't surprise me to see a gold correction coming, but a small one. It's not going to stop the overall trend that we've had in gold uh, dating back all this time. If you look at it, basically, since they allow gold to trade freely against the dollar, it's gone up. And it, there was a dip from 2011 to about 2016 when it started going back up. But it completed that cup and handle and boom, once it completed that cup and handle, like I said, for like two years, I documented the cup and handle. I said, here's the cup, here's the handle, bullish formation, bam, breakout. Were we right on that one? We happen to be right on that one. Okay, now I'm going to show you bar chart. Instead of showing the cot report and that messy table that tells about, you know, how who's trading on the COMEX and how, who's going long gold, who's going short gold, who's going long silver, who's going short silver. We're going to do it in graphical format. So as we come down here, you can see different colors. I'm going to do this bottom one. And when I click on this word down here, it's going to break out what the colors mean. So the producers are in red. The producers are short because they're below the zero line. Here's the zero line and they're down here. So producers are taking some sort of price edge in case the price of gold falls because of the one that sells it. So it's insurance. It's like, okay, if I'm producing, you know, 5,000 ounces of gold between here and December, and gold's this price now, and I want to lock in my profits now, I will take a short futures position because if the price falls on that futures position, I'll make money on it. Okay. Got cash in that futures position. I get cash. That cash offsets the, the lowering of the price that they're going to sell it at the market. Now, if it doesn't go down, it goes up. They're out the money. They're out the amount of money they have to put up the contract. But the money that you have to put up the contract on Comics because it's a leveraged market is a lot less than the actual money that you would have if you were to buy the gold or silver outright. So it's a cheaper way of getting insurance on price. So it makes sense why producers are short and below the line. The green one are the swap dealers. Who are they? The bullion banks, remember? And the bullion banks are all the way down here negative on gold. They've increased their position. And if you look, it's widened over time. So since about uh, February 24th, beginning of the year, we really started having more and more bullishness in the gold market, but also look at this widening. On the positive side, you have blue and yellow. Who's blue? Blue's managed money. Those are the financial houses. Remember I talk about those? And yellow is the other reportables, the family offices, the rich individuals, those types of things. They're typically long gold, have been for quite some time. So if you add up their position and their position, they equal, but you, you see the spread widening. In other words, there's more interest since February of this year in the gold trade, more contracts, more people taking a position long or short. And in this particular case, it's led to a huge increase in the price of gold in that time because more people are interested. And this is actually you know, record interest. If you go back all the way dating back to the pandemic, there's more interest in gold now than there was when stuff was hitting the fan back then. And we had the, you know, quote unquote, health scare, the shutdowns and, you know, the people fighting over toilet paper. We've actually got more interest on the market than back now. What does that tell you? It tells you people see the train coming. They see the economic problems. What economic problems? The one JP Morgan just told us about higher geopolitical uncertainty, persistent longer term inflation, Concerns about debt debasement from all these countries, putting out more debt, trying to keep their economies from crashing, high government deficits, major economies, waning confidence in fiat currencies. That would be the dollar, the yen, you want the pound, the euro, and a broader diversification away from the dollar. That's why more people are buying gold and silver in, in the derivative market. That's what also happens to be why well, the price is going up. And this just shows you there's so much interest. And it also means that the banks get caught with their pants down. If we don't have a price reduction or a correction soon, the banks are going to be on the wrong side of the trade. That's another reason why I expect a correction. This is a huge amount of short interest, this green line by the banks. At some point, they're, 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 they're looking at the gold price going up. They're like, we got to bring this thing down because if we don't bring it down, we're going to be up a creek without a paddle because they're going to lose money in each of those contracts. And even though... You don't have to pay for all the gold to, to get a contract position. There are so many contracts. It's still a, a ton of money and they're at risk. Okay. They're at risk. All right. On to silver. Silver is in its third tranche or third trading level. It is broken up. We see silver started to break out around February, same time. When the gold break out, February, open interest rose in February. Thing, same thing in silver, February 1st. On February 1st, we saw a rise 
in silver from then to now. It's now October. How many months is that? It's about eight months, eight, eight, eight ish, seven and a half ish months that silver's been running. And it broke out of this middle trading range and went to this one. Now it broke out, came back down. It broke out top to May, came back down through July, about you know, a month and a half, and then boom, it shot back up. And this time, and when you see that, when you see it bumping up against the line, like it's bumping up against a resistance line, this is a trading line, and comes back down and goes back up and stays, it means this is no longer a resistance line. This is a support line, technically speaking. It means that it's not likely to fall below. Now it could. But it has a higher chance that even if it falls below, coming right back and keep going. Remember, things don't go in straight lines. Remember chaos theory. But when things go up, they can go up and down. But as long as they have that trend, then you're in what they call bull market. You're in, you're, it's a confirming signal. It's going to keep going. So that's what's going on silver. Now, silver hasn't gotten all the way to the top here where we say it's got a 50-year breakout like gold does. Gold has a 50-year breakout. It's in this top trading range. It's broken through the, the previous top and it kept running. Silver hasn't broken through its previous top of 50 bucks. It's got to go all the way up here. Here's 50 bucks. Once it gets into 50 ter and goes, territory and goes up and stays, then silver's going to run, baby, run to all new time, new all time highs and probably stay that, that way for a while. Well, what about silver trading? Do we have more trade in silver right now? Well, we have increased silver trade since guess when? February, <laughs> same time as gold, but it's not like an all time open interest. You can see there was a lot of open interest back here in February 2022 after the pandemic, right? Let's go back on a longer term chart. It was more in 20 during the pandemic. It was more in 2016 when you had that nice little bump in precious metals prices. So it's all the way down here. So 2016, 2020, 2022, there was more overall open interest. How am I telling that? Will you take the amount above and below the line or how wide these lines are from blue to red? And that tells you how many contracts are open. So silver hasn't hit its big breakout yet because there's not as much open interest. There's not as many contracts trading right now as there were in previous periods like there is gold. Gold, however, it's really frothy. In other words, gold goes up first, silver goes second. But we see that India's buying tons of silver. There's inflows into silver ETFs across the world. So silver's starting to get interesting. It's just running behind gold. But if you want to go and look, let's go back to a shorter term chart, three year. And we want to look at who's trading what. The producers are red. They're short. The swap dealers are green. They're short. The green is speculative interest because the swap dealers, the banks, the red are mostly miners and producers to downside risk. The blue is the managed money, the financial houses, and the yellow are the wealthy individuals and family offices. Same setup as gold, not as much of a breakout in open interest. Okay, what does that mean? When we don't have quite as much a breakout in open interest or the total amount of people trading on the market, open interest. We're interested. We put a contract out that's called open interest. Okay, Has widened in gold at the same time it had a 50-year breakout, which says, run, baby, run. This is going to run. It's going to keep going. And I do expect at some point, however, a pullback, a little bit of a contraction. The bullion banks don't want to lose money on all those shorts. Neither necessarily do the producers. This is probably going to be a little downside pressure on gold at some point this year. But it doesn't look like it's going to stay down for long if it does at all. And yes, some of the bullion banks could be in trouble if they can't figure out how to get out of that mess. We'll have to see. If gold stays up, and you have that, that really big record short interest amount of contracts. Somebody's got to be short. Somebody's got to be long. The shorts are going to be under incredible pressure. This may put pressure on one of the banks to go bankrupt or at least have severe financial distress, these big banks that are in there. It's just the big banks. It's the Bank of America, HSBC, Citibank, JP Morgan, I believe, are the big four, and then some others in there. So those banks could experience a lot of problems in their commodity trading book and the amount of money that they making commodities on their, their balance sheet, on their corporate balance sheet. And if they lose enough, it could cause them to have severe financial distress across all their operations. You know, real estate, banking, other aspects of finance. This could drag one of the banks down if the gold keeps running. And if you add silver on top because it started to run, then all of a sudden these commodities trading decks at the banks are like, oh boy, what do we do now? We went short. We were expecting to pull back and make our money like we do. You know, 
rinse and repeat, if you will. You go short, price goes long, then it comes short, you make your money. You put in more shorts, price goes long, then it goes short, you make your money. The banks have been doing that for forever. But if it stays long and they've got all this record amount of shorts and gold, that's a problem. And we're widening on silver. We're getting more open interest on silver. That's going to double down on the problem. And when you see that the JP Morgan basically say, well, the rest of the world's doubling down on gold because of all these problems uh, that, that we talk about on our show all the time. It's not a surprise JP Morgan said that. I mean, we, we talk about this every week for five years. Um, and before that, I wrote about it at a bunch of places. It's no surprise. We may be finally getting to the point where the banks is like, oh boy, somebody come bail us out. We're in trouble. It's just making the overall banking situation in the U.S. worse. Very good for people that invest in gold and silver. You can protect your purchasing power. Not so good for the banks. All right. This week, we talked about a lot. We talked Tuesday about chaos theory and all the stuff going on. There's a lot of uncertainties, a lot of scariness in the world at the moment. I just wanted to say that now is a good time to pay attention to risk and to protect yourself, not only financially. Some people are going to get rich in this. I'm not so much worried about getting rich. I'm worried about protecting people. Okay, that's why I do what I do is to help protect you, provide you the data information you need so you can understand how these markets work and you can protect yourself at home. Not only your pocketbook, but protect yourself in other ways, making sure you have your medications and your food and all that kind of stuff that you need, you know, to protect your, not only your lifestyle, just protect yourself. The other thing we need to do is remember, study our Bibles, pray, love our neighbor. When we get into tough times, religion plays a major role. Praying helps us offload the stress and loving our neighbor helps us all stay close as a community. So we don't unravel. Remember talking about culture, and all the cultural problems we have, we have to stay close as a community. You have to love each other. There's a lot of, <clears throat> there's just a lot of, let's say, anger. And the only way through it is, is love. And the only way through it is to do the right things. So, you know, I implore you to do all the right things that you need to do. I love you guys. God bless all of you. Appreciate it. That's going to be my last video for the week. This is Gold and Silver Report at the Freedom Report. You guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.